Hey all, it's Matt, your Average Gamer, and for this video, we're going to be ranking the top 30 Ashes of War in Elden Ring, and not only will we be ranking the top 30, later in the video, there's going to be a complete tier list for every Ash of War. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of information in this one. I do say that often, but this one specifically for Ashes of War has a ton of information. Keep in mind, we're talking about regular Ashes of War here, all the different builds and such you could do with them in the top 30. We've got some really great stuff for you. And not only that, we're going to be going into the tier list with a lot of detail and information on why I put each one where I put it. I hope this is really helpful ahead of DLC because guess what? DLC is right around the corner. We are so close to Shadow of the Earth Tree and the news so far with leaks and everything, it sounds like it's going to be massive. This is the top 30 Ashes of War in Elden Ring ranked with a complete tier list. And at number 30, we have Sacred Blade, an awesome Ash of War for taking on the Death Birds in the game because they're weak to Holy and one that specifically could be a lot better come DLC and you could turn it into a really good jump attack build. Let's jump into equipment and stats. For equipment, we have two Bandit Curve Swords in Sacred Affinity with Sacred Blade on both. We have the Erdtree Seal, Raptor's Black Feathers. We have Rotwing Sword Insignia, Shard of Alexandra, Sacred Scorpion Charm, Claw Talisman, Holy Tear, Faith Tear. And for stats on this one, we have 60 Vigor, 22 Mind, 26 Endurance. We have 80 Faith with the Faith Tear. We are using Golden Vow and Hallow Shabiri to buff this build, and this could end up being a great one for DLC. And at number 29, we have Blood Tax. Blood Tax is really cool, but the only thing I don't like about it is Repeating Thrust, which ends up higher on this list, tends to do more damage, and it's a little bit outclassed. There seems to be a little bit of a damage reduction with it, but you do gain back HP on a per hit basis, which could be really convenient. Overall, that's why it ends up being a little bit lower here, and we have the Blood Iron Greatsword with Blood Tax on it. We have the Dragon Communion Seal, the White Mass, Hit 51 Poise, Shard of Alexander, Rotwing Sword Insignia, Lord of Blood's Exaltation, Melissa's Prosthesis, Thorny Tear, Faith Tear, we're using Market Shackle there. And for stats, we have 60 Vigor, we have 40 Strength, 60 when we're two-handing this, we have 45 Arcane, and we're using Golden Bow and Flame Grip Me Strength. And at number 28, we have Stormblade. Now, on a first journey, this one would be higher. I play mainly on New Game Plus. All footage, by the way, is New Game Plus 7, around journey 38 going into 39. But for me, Stormblade, since it has a lower damage cap, is convenient, but a little bit lower on this list. And we have the Long Sword and Keen Affinity with Stormblade. Any seal for buffs. We have the Shard of Alexander, Ritual Swords, Houseman, Blue Dancer Charm, Melissa's Prosthesis, Dexterity Tier, and Faith Tier. By the way, not to get confusing, but I meant New Game Plus and Beyond. I'm always at least on some New Game Plus, but here on New Game Plus 7, which is most of the time. 75 Dexterity, 60 Vigor, Golden Val, and Halos Shabiri and a Light Equipment Load. And at number 27, we have Thunderbolt, one of my favorite spammable Ashes of War because it's so easy to use. It's very FP friendly, and you can constantly use it over and over again. There we built up 17,000 damage on this dragon. Yeah, this dragon has a lot of HP on New Game Plus 7, by the way. He is weak to most things, so that's convenient. But overall, Thunderbolt is really cool to use. I like it with the Nagakiba. I think it combines well. I like the Nagakiba a lot as a weapon. It has a good amount of reach, and the AR on it is decent, which for this gives you more damage on Thunderbolt, which is a huge bonus for us. Is it ridiculously OP? It's not ridiculously overpowered or anything. It's not going to be anything that's completely insane, but you can keep using it over and over again at relatively low FP cost, and you can take down a lot of bosses this way. For me, it easily makes it on this list into the top 30. I mean, it's not that far into it, but it is quite good. By the way, I also want everyone that's watching this video to comment below and let me know what you're looking forward to most in DLC. It's so close. It's almost here. I couldn't be more excited about it. Let's talk about DLC in the comments below. Be sure to comment what you're looking forward to. Yeah, I want to hear all about DLC. For equipment, we have the Lightning Nagakiba with Thunderbolt. We have any seal for buffs. We did hit 51 poise. We're at 55. Shard of Alexander, Ritual Swords, Talisman, Lightning Scorpion Charm, Melissa's Prosthesis, Lightning Tear, and Faith Tear. For me, it's the eight new weapon types to build around. That's going to be fun. We have 60 Vigor, 65 Dexterity, 33 Faith with the Faith Tear. We're using Golden Vow and a Hallow Shabiri. And at number 26, we have Lightning Slash. This is a really good way to get a lot of DPS for Lightning if you want to with the Jump Attack build. And this is a definitely one of those ones on the list that works better as a Jump Attack build. Much like Sacred Blade and when we showcase Flaming Strike later in the build. The Ash of War itself is just okay, but it can give you a lot of DPS when you're doing jumps. Now the concept here is to get lightning imbued on both and then that adds damage, lightning damage to each sword. We're using the bandit curve swords for this and I'll have around 700 AR. Let's jump into equipment.
Then we have two Bandit Curve Swords and Lightning Affinity with Lightning Slash, any seal for buffs. We have the Raptors Black Feathers, Claw Talisman, Rotten Weak Sword Insignia, Lightning Scorpion Charm, Malicious Prosthesis, Thorny Tier, Faith Tier. By the way, you could pause or slow these down on YouTube if need be. I had to go through these fast because there's a lot of them. We have 60 Vigor, 65 Dexterity, Golden Val, Halshbury. And at number 25, we have Glint Blade Phalax. This specifically is one of the better ways to poise break on New Game Plus and beyond. Now, each one of these Glint Blades does 10 poise damage for a total of 40, which is actually quite good. And they can even do decent damage too when added to a magic build. Now, me personally, I like adding them to other builds. As I mentioned there, if you can add them to different builds, you could definitely stack up some damage. It works well with Square Off, by the way, because between the two, your first hit with Square Off can end up giving you 80 poise damage and makes for a good posture breaking build. Overall, though, the Glint Blades definitely make this list for their poise breaking ability alone. Let's jump into equipment and stats. And for equipment, we have the Clean Rod Sword and Cold Affinity with Glit Blade Phalax. Any seal for buffs, the Spellblade set will boost this Ash. Ritual Swords, Talisman, Shard of Alexander, Magic Scorpion Charm, Ritual Shield, Talisman, Magic Tier, Faith Tier. By the way, the stats are always on the right there too if you pause the screen or pause the screen as well. 60 Vigor, we have 60 Intelligence, and we're using Golden Vow and Halashbury to buff this build. Okay, so for the next one, number 24, we have Endure. I like this one because you could build up a lot of defense, and it goes really well with Black Flame's protection. It can give you a ridiculous amount of physical damage resistance when combined with Black Flame's protection. Yeah, they kind of combine perfectly together because it just adds so much defense. And then for this build, I'm using the Iron Greatsword Heavy Affinity as a strength build and then mixing in charged attacks for decent damage too, and of course, able to tank massive hits as well. I think the total, by the way, will give you, when you use Golden Valve, Black Flames Protection, and then you use Endure, you're going to have between 80 and 90% physical damage resistance, which is incredible. Let's jump into equipment and stats. For equipment, we have the Iron Greatsword and Heavy Affinity. We have the Claw Mark Seal. We have 51 poise here. We have the Dagger Talisman, because you might get some posture breaks with charge attacks. Ritual Shield Talisman, Axe Talisman. We have the Faith Talisman, too. Spike Crack Tier, Faith Tier. Yeah, Black Flames Protection takes 30 Faith. So we have 30 Faith with the Faith tier, 66 Strength, 60 Vigor, Golden Vow, and Black Flames Protection. And next up on this list at number 23, we have Bloodhound Step. This used to be a phenomenal Ash of War at launch time. Now, it has been nerfed since then, and you can still get hit. I end up getting a hit at the end here, but overall, it's still a really good Ash to use an assortment of situations to avoid getting hit. And again, I do get hit at the end here, but for me personally, it is a very good Ash of War still. Now, you don't have the frames that you had when the game came out, and it's a little bit more costly. I think they nerfed a couple things with it, but Bloodhound Step is still quite good. Very useful and i think it's still even used in pvp now too yeah it used to be super op at launch we have the heavy iron greatsword with bloodhound step we have the claw mark seal we hit 51 poise we have the dagger talisman for charge attacks in case you get a break ritual swords talisman and shield talisman axe talisman spike crack tier fate tier and for stats we have 60 vigor 66 strength we have 15 faith 25 faith with the faith tier so we can use golden val flame grip me strength get a little decent damage out of the heavy iron greatsword too at number 22, we have Impaling Thrust, which does a really good amount of posture damage, specifically for a dexterity build. If you're running a dex build and you're looking for something that just does purely good posture damage, Impaling Thrust might be for you. Now, it's not going to do a ridiculous amount of damage as a whole in terms of the Ash of War, but the poise damage for a dexterity build, it, it is great. It's an underrated Ash of War. Let's jump into equipment. And we have the Naga Kiba and Keen Affinity with Impaling Thrust. We have any seal for buffs. We have the White Mass, hit 51 poise. Shard of Alexander, Ritual Swords, Talisman, Lord of Blood's Exaltation, Melissa's Prosthesis, Stone Barb Crack Tier, Faith Tier. And for stats, we have 60 Vigor, 22 Mind, 26 Endurance. We have 75 Dexterity, 25 Faith with the Faith Tier, Golden Val, Flame Grip and Strength, Blood Flame Blade. And at number 21, we have a really fun one. One of my favorite Ashes of War to use. Not the most overpowered one in the game, but Earthshaker itself is a, it's an absolute blast to use, in all honesty. You get that first hit, and then the follow-up swing, especially for like regular NPCs like Gideon here, where you could throw them. It's just a lot of fun to use. A lot of people often ask me what I use that's not overpowered. Earthshaker is definitely on that list. I just enjoy the Ash of War. I like it better than Horror Lose Earthshaker. I find that one harder to pull off. This one, I like the initial contact damage, and then the follow-up swing makes it really fun to use, and you get a lot of damage out of it, too. 
Is it super overpowered though? No, it just does good damage and it's relatively reliable. It'll do good poise damage to most bosses too. It's hard to tell on a regular NPC type enemy like Gideon here, but overall you'll get a decent amount of poise damage with the Ash. Probably around 40 or 50 of the jumping equipment. We have Guts Greatsword and Heavy Affinity with Earthshaker, Claw Mark Seal, 51 Poise, Shard of Alexander, I was using the Spell Drake Talisman there, Urtree's Favorite Plus 2, Ritual Swords Talisman, Green Burst Crystal Tier, Faith Tier. And for stats, we have 60 Vigor, 66 Strength, 99 more with two-handedness, 25 Faith with the Faith Tier, we have 23 Mind, 32 Endurance, we're using Gold and Vow and Flame Grammar Strength. And at number 20, we have Spinning Slash. Spinning Slash is pretty impressive in terms of the amount of poise damage it does in combination with the amount of bleed buildup. Now, there are better options for quicker bleed buildup, but this is a good one too, and definitely one you should try out if you've never tried it before. Yeah, it hits really hard. Even on New Game Plus 7 here, it hits very hard. In terms of poise damage, I think the entire Ash probably does at least 40 or so, so it's pretty impressive there with the Grave Scythe, the jumping equipment. I was spinning at the same time as the Godskin Apostle. We have the Grave Scythe in Heavy Affinity with Spinning Slash, Any Seal for Buffs, White Mask, Shard of Alexander, Rotten Wing Sword, Signia, Lord of Blood's Exaltation, Ritual Sword Talisman, Thorny Tier, Faith Tier. And for stats on this one, we have 60 Vigor, 23 Mind, 32 Endurance again, 66 Strength, 99 when we're two handing this, 25 Faith with the Faith Tier, Golden Valve Flame, Grim Strength, Blood Flame Blade. And at number 19, we have Braggart's Roar, which is my favorite roar in Elden Ring because I think it does more damage than the rest of them. And I love the status effect multiplier that comes with roars, especially when you use bigger weapons and you can get three times the amount of status buildup. In Cold Affinity on Guts, it makes for a great combination because you'll get that Frost debuff. That's an extra 20% damage and then your next hit will be massive too. It's excellent for that. This is a good combination. Let's jump into equipment stats. And we have Guts Great Sword and Cold Affinity with Braggart Sword. Any seal for buffs. We have 51 poise. We have the Roar Medallion, Axe Talisman, Urtree's Favorite Plus 2, Ritual Swords Talisman, Spike Crack Tier, Fate Tier. And for stats, we have 60 Vigor, 23 Mind, same as before, 66 Strength, 25 Faith with the Faith Tier, Golden Vow, and we are buffing with Flame Grammar Strength too. And at number 18, we have Carrion Grandeur, one that I'm not a huge fan of, on, especially on New Game Plus and Beyond, when stuff starts to get a lot of HP. This is one that's typically meant for hyper buffing. Aside from that, for most boss fights, it's really slow to use. Now, don't get me wrong, the damage is excellent, but as far as using it and being able to charge the whole thing on most bosses, if you're not hyper buffing it, it is tough. Let's jump into equipment. All right, and for this, we have the Miserae Corday and Magic Affinity with the Carrion Grandeur. Any seal for buffs. Spellblade set will boost this. Ritual Sword, Talisman, Shard of Alexander, Magic Scorpion Charm, Godfrey Icon. It is chargeable. Magic Tier and Faith Tier. And for stats on this one, we have 60 Vigor. We have 60 Intelligence as well. 22 Mind and Endurance. 33 Faith with the Faith Tier. Golden Vow and Halsherberry. And at number 17, we have Craig Blade. Craig Blade is a personal favorite for a lot of people, probably, because the amount of poise damage it adds. Now, it has been nerfed since launch. It's not as good as its launch days. I think it used to do a 20% increase. Now it's down to 10, but it combos really well with the Star Fist. Yeah, this is pretty much the perfect combination here. Now, the Star Fist does go well with Blood Flame Blade, too, if you want to get some additional bleed buildup. But if you're mainly focusing on charge attacks, you can get a lot of pure physical damage with Craig Blade. And then, of course, you get the extra poise damage, and you could take down some big bosses and break them easily. Now, for me, I did fight the Mini Dragons. I like testing stuff on them. They're convenient for that. They have around 10,000 HP and decent poise. We have the Star Fist and Heavy Affinity with Craig Blade. Any seal for buffs. We have 51 poise. Ritual Sword Talisman, Axe Talisman, Dagger Talisman, Green Turtle Talisman, Spike Crack Tier, Fate Tier. And back to our strength stats. By the way, I don't know if I said this, but I'll put it in the description below which ones you could use together. We have 60 Vigor, 66 Strength, Golden Valve, Flame Grim Strength. And next up at number 16, we have Prayerful Strike. I know for a lot of people, some people will probably put this higher, but a lot of people will put this lower, especially since most of the time you're using it in Sacred Affinity for Holy Damage, but this really is a melee version of the Blasphemous Blade's Taker's Flames. Now, I end up in a little bit of a tight battle here that comes close a little bit down to the wire. Not too, too much, but overall, you could see how much HP I'm able to regen. Now, I do have to heal a couple times here, but the amount of healing you get on a per hit basis for Prayerful Strike is incredible. The only downside I would say for this one is that it is stamina costly, and for some of the faster bosses in the game, it could be a little bit of a challenge to use, but since you're healing constantly all the time, there's so many bosses you can use this build on to good success, and of course, you're getting a good amount of poise damage per hit too. 
Yeah, I think it's going to give you around 40 poise damage on each hit with the Great Stars here. And the Great Stars has a little bit of additional healing too, so it combos well with Prayerful Strike. It's an excellent one to use with the Sash of War. By the way, a quick shout out to my community. Thank you everybody that's been subbed to this channel. I appreciate all of you guys so much. I can't believe how much this channel grew. DLC is right around the corner. If you're not subbed yet, be sure to hit that subscribe button because it's going to be an awesome time with DLC. We are so close. It's almost here. I cannot wait. We have the great stars in Sacred Affinity with Powerful Strike. Any seal for buffs. We don't need the Raptors Black Feathers. We hit 51 poise though. Ritual Swords Talisman, Shard of Alexander, Sacred Scorpion Charm. We have the Ritual Shield Talisman. And then we have the Holy Tier and Faith Tier too. Let's jump into stats. And I know somebody's going to comment, let's jump into stats as one word. Of course, we have 60 Vigor, 70 Faith with the Faith Tier. We have 22 Mind, 26 Endurance, Golden Valve, Black Flames Protection. And at number 15, we have Onsheath. I recently put this one as an underrated Ash of War. I didn't realize how many people use it, but there is a lot of people that avoid this one because it's not amazing in terms of damage, but the poise damage itself. And then if you use a Katana here and then use Blood Flame Blade, you can get a decent amount of bleed buildup too if you're mixing in regular hits. Yeah, you know, I always listen to feedback. You guys comment a lot of stuff, and, and keep in mind, I read pretty much every comment that's on YouTube. So there's a lot of people saying, well, it's not underrated, Matt. A lot of people use it. But the thing is, I don't hear about it much. When I make these lists and stuff, there's not a lot of people that are talking about on sheath. And yeah, I go by a lot of the comments in terms of what people are using because people tell me what they're using all the time, and I don't hear about on sheath that often. I feel like early game, it would probably make for a fantastic build, especially on base new game with the poise damage. It's probably pretty incredible for that. And yeah, we end up taking the Magmorum down. You're going to, of course, mix in regular hits too, especially if you use Blood Flame Blade. You can get some bleed buildup out of that that way too. And the damage again on the Ash is decent. Poise damage is great. Let's jump into equipment. Real quick, we have the Nagakiba and Keen Affinity with Onsheath on it. We have Any Seal for Buffs, White Mask, Shard of Alexander, Ritual Sword Talisman, Lord of Blood's Exaltation, Melissa's Prosthesis, Stone Barb, Crack Tear, Faith Tear. By the way, the Axe Talisman does not boost this because you're holding down the action input for the Ash of War. We have 60 Vigor, 75 Dexterity, Golden Val, Flame Grip Strength, and Blood Flame Blade. And next up, at number 14, we have Square Off. Now, this one for sure is underrated. The amount of posture damage, I know I mentioned poise damage a lot, but a lot of these Ashes do good poise damage. Square Off is no exception, doing 40 poise damage on charged attacks with a straight sword. Which in reality is pretty impressive. That's an impressive amount for a weapon that is relatively lightweight too. Square Off is definitely one you should try out. If you've never tried out this Ash of War before and you're looking for something specifically for straight swords, try Square Off. Let's jump into equipment. We have the Broadsword and Heavy Affinity with Square Off. We have the Claw Mark Seal. We hit 51 poise. We have the Ritual Sword Talisman, Shard of Alexander, Dagger Talisman, Green Turtle Talisman, Crimson Burst Crystal Tier, Fate Tier. And for stats, we have 60 Vigor, 23 Mind, 32 Endurance, 66 Strength. We have 25 Faith with the Faith tier. These are our Strength stats. Golden Val, Flame Grip Strength. And at number 13, we have Blood Blade. Now for Blood Blade, and then later on this list, obviously Seppuku's going to make an appearance. I ended up doing a build for the Godskin Peelers because a lot of people have been asking me for those. I did include my top 8 Bleed builds, though, if you want to get more damage out of this one and then Seppuku itself. Now for the Godskin Peeler, it's not too bad, and Blood Blade is a very underrated Ash. But you will get more physical damage out of an Occult Nagakiba or an Occult Scavenger Curve Sword for this instance. Let's jump into Equipment and Stats. And Mod goes down a little quicker with the uh, Scavenger Curve Sword. We have the Godskin Peeler and Blood Affinity with Blood Blade, Dragon Communion Seal, White Mass, Ritual Shield Talisman, Blue Dancer Charm, Lord of Blood's Exaltation, Melissa's Prosthesis, Thorny Tear, Faith Tear, and Moog Shackle. Blood Blade has pure physical damage, by the way, so the Blue Dancer Charm will increase it by 14% if you're under 8, a weight of 8, and under 16, you will have a 12% increase. 60 Vigor, 60 Dexterity, 45 Arcane, Gold Val, Flame Grim Strength. And at number 12, we have Black Flame Tornado. I ended up using this clip. It wasn't on a boss or anything with the troll at Secluded Cell. The only thing I don't like about this is it has virtually no hyper armor, but it does massive damage. It can destroy some of the bigger bosses in the game and does a lot of percentage damage. Let's jump into equipment. Equipment, we have the Flame Arm Grave Scythe with Black Flame Tornado. Any seal for buffs, we hit 51 poise. Shard of Alexander, Ritual Sword Talisman, Fire Scorpion Charm, Ritual Shield Talisman, Flame Tier, Faith Tier. And for stats on this one, we have 60 Vigor. We have 80 Faith with the Faith tier. This scales, by the way, all the way with your Faith stat on Black Flame Tornado. And then we're using Golden Vow and Halish Berry to buff this. 
And at number 11, we have repeating thrust. Now for me, I get more damage at a repeating thrust. This boss, keep in mind, is more resistant than the one we did with blood tax, but I love this with the iron greatsword as a strength arcane build, especially since the iron greatsword has high base damage and blood affinity. Let's jump into equipment. And we have the Blood Iron Greatsword with Repeating Thrust. We have the Dragon Communion Seal, White Mask, Hit 51 Poise, Shard of Alexander, Rotten Wing Sword Insignia, Lord of Blood's Exaltation, Melissa's Prosthesis, Thorny Tier, Faith Tier. And for stats, we have 60 Vigor, we have 45 Arcane, we have 40 Strength, 60 when we're two-handing this. We're using Golden Vow and Flame Grant Me Strength for this. And at number 10, we have one of my favorite builds ever, and that is Flaming Strike. I can't stop talking about this one because I love this one, and it'll give you 750 AR on each Bandit Curve Sword and does massive fire damage. The Ash of War itself is quite good, but the added fire damage is excellent. Let's jump into equipment for this one. Apparently, we want to show off the Fire Swords. They do look cool, though. We have two Bandit Curve Swords in Flame Art with Flaming Strike. We have any seal for buffs. You're going to need the Raptor's Black Feathers for this one, Claw Talisman, Shard of Alexander, Fire Scorpion Charm, Rotten Wing Sword Insignia, Flame Tier, Thorny Tier. And now for stats on this one, we have 60 Vigor, we have 70 Faith, 22 Mind, 26 Endurance. This is a really cool build. I definitely recommend trying this one out. I had 18 Strength to give me some variety as far as what weapons I can use, 15 Dexterity, Golden Vow, and Halashabiri. And in number nine, we have Wild Strikes. Wild Strikes is an incredible Ash of War that can build up a lot of bleed, a lot of strike damage. This is a phenomenal one to take out bosses. This boss, by the way, is really tough on New Game Plus 7, the Strikorn Tree Sentinel, and he went down pretty much instantly. Let's jump into equipment and stats. And for equipment on this one, we have the Heavy Great Stars with Wild Strikes. We're using Blood Flame Blade, Any Seal for Buffs, White Mass, Shard of Alexander, Rotten Wing Sword Insignia, Lord of Blood's Exaltation, Ritual Sword, Salisman, Thorny Tier, and Faith Tier. Let's jump into stats. This is one I absolutely love. We have 60 Vigor, 66 Strength on our Strength stats, 25 Faith with the Faith Tier. We're using Golden Val, Flame Grant Strength, and Blood Flame Blade. And number eight, we have Sword Dance. Pretty close to Double Slash for me. Now, the entire animation of Double Slash will do more damage, but Sword Dance is quicker. And for some people, that could be more convenient. It is a really good Ash of War, especially with Blood Flame Blade. Let's jump into stats, equipment, everything you need to know. And for equipment, we have the Keen Nagakiba with Sword Dance. We have any seal for buffs. We have the White Mask, Hit 51 Poise. We have the Shard of Alexander, Rotten Wing Sword Insignia, Lord of Blood's Exaltation, Melissa's Prosthesis, Thorny Tier, Faith Tier. And by the way, if you don't have one of those two talismans, you use the Ritual Sword as a replacement for either one. We have 60 Vigor, 75 Dexterity, 25 Faith with the Faith tier. We're using Golden Vow, Flame Grant Me Strength, and Blood Flame Blade to buff Sword Dance. And next up, we have Double Slash, which is pretty much directly comparable to Sword Dance. And again, you may like one or the other better. That's why they're right next to each other. I like Double Slash a little bit better because the entire animation I get more damage out of. Let's jump into equipment and stats. For equipment, we have the Keen Nagahiba with Double Slash, any seal for buffs. We have the White Mass, Shard of Alexander, Rotten Wing Sword Insignia, Lord of Blood's Exaltation, Melissa's Prosthesis, Thorny Tier, Faith Tier, same basic setup as Sword Dance. Let's jump into stats. And for stats on this one, we have 60 Vigor, same as before, 75 Dexterity, 26 Endurance, 25 Faith with the Faith Tier, Golden Valve, Flame Grip, Shank, Blood, Flame Blade. And at number six, we have probably my favorite Ash of War on this list next to the Flaming Strike one. They're probably tied. I love Ice Spear. It scales with both Dexterity and Intelligence, which is awesome. You could run it on a Dex build, get great damage, and Frost build up. And the versatility of running it on a Dex build is great because you could switch literally from Ice Spear to using a build like Double Slash or a Bleed build, and it gives you a lot of variety because you have magic damage at your disposal, and of course, then you could switch to Bleed and whatnot too. This also does 20 poise damage per hit as well. I actually love this Ash so much that it's closer to number one for me than this personally. I rank this though based on how I think it is going to be for most players. And yeah, there's higher damage options than this, but it is still an excellent Ash of War. And I wanted this to be my finalized list for Ashes of War before DLC. So hopefully this is informative. Let's jump into equipment and stats. And for equipment, we have the Guardian Sword Spear and Keen Affinity with Ice Spear. We have any seal for buffs. You don't need the Raptor's Black Feathers. Hit 51 Poise, Shard of Alexander, Ritual Sword, Talisman, Magic Scorpion Charm, Melissa's Prosthesis, Magic Tier, Faith Tier. By the way, the Spellblade set will boost the damage on this. Let's jump into stats. And we have 60 Vigor, 23 Mind, 27 Endurance, 65 Dexterity, 33 Faith with the Faith Tier, Golden Val, Halashabir. And at number 5, we have Royal Knight's Resolve, which will increase the damage on your next attack by 80%. It's really convenient for some of the bigger weapons in the game, and it combos perfectly with the Giant Crusher. 
it can lead to massive damage and it's one of the better things in the game to hyper buff too i do end up missing my hit there that happens sometimes but it's all right we end up getting him back for it in the end giant crusher and royal knight's resolve is a solid combination for any strength user and definitely one worth looking at Probably the definition of a bonk or even unga bunga build if we want to call it that. We have the Giant Crusher and Heavy Affinity with Royal Knight's Resolve. Any seal for buffs, we hit 51 poise. We have the Ritual Sword Talisman, Axe Talisman, Ritual Shield Talisman. You can use the Great Jars Arsenal for the weight. Spike Crack Tier, Faith Tier. And for stats, we have 60 Vigor, 23 Mind, 32 Endurance, 66 Strength. These are our Strength stats. Again, 25 Faith to the Faith Tier. We're buffing with Golden Vow and Flame Grimmer Strength. And at number four, we have Spinning Strikes. Spinning Strikes, for me, no question about it, is definitely up there. I love this Astro War. I actually like it better than Spinning Weapon, although I ended up putting Spinning Weapon ahead because I know a lot of people enjoy that one more. And it is easier to use, in a sense, because you can stop it. With this one, though, if you keep going, the damage in between procs and the bleed is absolutely insane. Let's jump into equipment, stats, everything you need to know. In a second here after we grab that grace because I forget it a lot and we have the heavy grave scythe with spinning strikes We have any seal for buffs. We have the white mask. We have the shard of Alexander Ron wing sword insignia lord of blood's exaltation Melissa's prosthesis thorny tier faith tier and we're using sleeping pots and for stats on this one We have 60 vigor 23 mind. We have 66 strength strength stats again I'll list the ones below you could use together like I mentioned earlier golden valve flame grant strength and blood flame blade all right, now it's time to get into an epic battle with the Fire Giant, 64,000 HP to get through here. At number three, we have Spinning Weapon. I know a lot of people like this one, and it is convenient in terms of how fast you can use it and how much bleed buildup you can get, although I do think the damage in between procs is better on Spinning Strikes. By the way, all these last three are pretty epic battles. We have uh, Beast Clergyman and Malachith coming up, and then we have at the uh, final one, we've got Godfrey and Horaloo. So they're all pretty awesome epic battles at the end here, of course, with the uh, the best builds, the best Astro War, in my opinion. And anyways, back to this, Spinning Weapon itself is pretty incredible. This is one you can get really early game, too. I have an early game guide for it. I'll leave that in the description, too, and you can run this from the beginning to end game and get great results. Yeah, you can absolutely kill it with Spinning Weapon, no question about it. This is one of those ones where it's just going to be good for most of the game. Now, it doesn't have the range either of Spinning Strikes, but again, the bleed buildup on it is ridiculous. I mean, you just hit it once, maybe even twice for some bosses. Later in the fight, too, keep in mind their bleed resistances go up, and you're going to get a lot of procs. I wouldn't be afraid to take this into DLC either. This is one of those builds, I think all the top builds here within the top five, maybe even the top 10, I wouldn't be afraid to take any of them into DLC. I think they'll all be reliable enough to, well, to be strong enough to take on DLC. Maybe not the fire one because we might be dealing with some fire resistance pulses, but as far as the rest of it goes, absolutely. And we took down the fire giant. He's really not too hard if you're using something like spinning strikes or spinning weapons. You can actually take him down pretty quickly because of the damage in between procs and then being able to get those bleed procs, which take a huge percentage of his HP off because he has a lot of HP. Let's jump into equipment. And for equipment, we have the Grave Scythe in Heavy Affinity with Spinning Weapon. We have Any Seal for Buffs, White Mass, Shard of Alexander, Rotten Wing Sword Insignia, Lord of Blood's Exaltation, Melissa's Prosthesis, Thorny Tier, Faith Tier. We have 60 Vigor, 23 Mind, Strength Stats again, 66 Strength, 25 Faith with a Faith Tier, and of course we're using Golden Vow, Flame Grant Me Strength, and Blood Flame Blade to buff this build and get a lot of damage. Alright, get ready for an epic battle, because at number 2 we have Lion's Call, and there's something I realized about this fight specifically. If you're ever running a Strength build on New Game Plus and Beyond, and you're, you're going into this fight, honestly you're probably pretty decent at this game. I'm not speaking about myself personally, but overall, this is definitely a harder fight as a Strength build. I realized that when taking them on, I ended up losing this fight probably about five or six times before I got them, and I realized how hard it is because of how poise, especially on New Game Plus 7 where their poise is just insane. On base New Game, they actually don't have a ton of poise, but on New Game Plus 7 here, it's hard to break them, and the physical damage just isn't that great on them. For instance, for me, I like taking an Ice Spear. The Blastus Blade can take care of them fast. There's a lot of different things. Range stuff tends to work on them. Elemental stuff, for the most part, other than Holy, works on them well. But as far as pure physical damage, I've noticed, it's really not that great for this fight. And all this to say, it's a testament to how good Lion's Call is, that even in a situation where it's not as good compared to some of the other boss fights in the game because they have decent physical resistances, Lion's Claw is still phenomenal. It really is one of the best Ashes of War in the game. It's the definition of reliable, and this is one of those builds. It was actually part of my DLC build. If you haven't seen that yet, that's on the channel. It's a rather unique build that's Strength and Faith that allows for a lot of variety, and one of the things that I can take in with that build and use for DLC is a Lion's Claw setup that's Strength and Faith based. 
Yeah, that build has a ton of variety. There's so much you can do. I mean, you could do a flame art version if you want to. You could do a pure physical version. I think I did that in the video, but there is just so much you can do with Strength and Faith and Lion's Claws right there with the best of them, and you're able to use that build too with my setup. I'll leave that in the description too, so you don't have to go over to my channel to check it out. I know a lot of people go to my channel pages now since it's organized. I've had some compliments on that. I appreciate it, by the way. Um, as far as the actual channel goes, it, yeah, it's very organized now, very easy to understand ahead of DLC, and the DLC build itself, yeah, I'll put that one in the description if you want to check that out. That's the exact stats and setup I'm going to be taking into DLC. And I can't wait. We keep talking about it during this video. Don't forget to comment below exactly what you're excited for. What are you looking forward to most? The exploration part, the weapons, the bosses. What are you looking forward to the most in Shadow of the Earth Tree when it drops on June 21st? Let's jump into equipment. And we have God's Great Sword and Heavy Affinity with Lion's Claw. We have the Claw Mark Seal. We have 51 Voice, Shard of Alexander, Dragon Crest Great Shield Talisman, Urchie's Favorite Plus 2, Ritual Shield or Sword Talisman, Green Burst Crystal Tier, and Faith Tier. And for stats, this is why I went through them really quickly, because a lot of them, like the strength stats, deck stats, they're the same. So 66 strength here, 60 vigor, and for our buffs, of course, we're using Golden Vow and Flame Strength to buff this build. And at number one, we have Seppuku. This is no surprise to anybody. The only surprise here might be for anybody is, is as far as the actual build itself, I use the Godskin Peelers, because a lot of people are asking me for a build for these, and they're not bad at all. Now, I do think the Gargoyles Twin Blades are better, the Scavenger Curve Swords are better, they are in the description with the best bleed builds, but as far as the Godskin Peelers, they're not bad either. Yeah, they're really not too bad. I haven't made a build for them in a very, very long time, but they hit pretty well. They have a decent hitbox, and then as far as the bleed build up, like any twin blade, you're getting 129 bleed build up on each, and I think with Seppuku, a little over 500 AR on each too. Yeah, they're, they're really, they actually impressed me, to be honest. I know a lot of people like them, but I was impressed with the amount of damage I was getting. I do think the Gargoyle Twin Blades are a direct upgrade, technically speaking, but they seem to hit really well. I actually had an easier time. I don't know if the hitbox is different or they're longer hitting with these. And then the bleed build up again, the damage in between procs wasn't bad either. It was pretty solid all around. Yeah, by the way, Seppuku, what it does. Now, as far as Seppuku itself, when you activate it on each one, you're going to get additional bleed buildup that scales with Arcane, and you're also going to get a flat 30 damage, 30 physical damage added to your weapon as well. In a second here, we're going to go over equipment, stats, everything you need to know. And we've almost made it to the tier list. We're close to the tier list where I go through every single Ash of War in the game, and I give it a tier from S all the way down to D tier. Now, let's jump into equipment. And we have two of the Godskin Peelers with Seppuku on them in Blood Affinity, Dragon Communion Seal, White Mask Raptors, Black Feathers, Rotten Wing Sword Insignia, Claw Talisman, Lord of Blood's Exaltation, Melissa's Prosthesis, Thorny Tear, Faith Tear. And now for stats on this one, we have 50 Dexterity, 45 Arcane, we do have 60 Vigor, and Golden Vow and Flame Grimmie Strength for buffs. And now for S tier, we have Lion's Claw, Giant Hunt, Royal Knight's Resolve, Spinning Strikes, we have Spinning Weapon, they're both amazing, Seppuku, we have Ice Spear as well, one of my favorite Ashes of War in the game. And for A tier, I really like Repeating Thrust, a lot of bleed build up there, Double Slash and Sword Dance are phenomenal, Flaming Strike, excellent for fire damage jump attacks, Black Flame Tornado, the damage ceiling we know is insane, Blood Blade I feel like is incredibly underrated, does a ton of bleed build up, and of course we have Wild Strikes too, very reliable. All right, now the B tier. We have Stamp, Upward Cut. We have Craig Blade, great for poise damage. Braggart's Roar, probably the best roar. Spinning Slash, Impaling Thrust, On Sheath. We have Quick Step and Bloodhound Step. For what they are, they're great. Square Off, excellent poise damage there. Charge Forth, Storm Blade, Storm Caller. Glintstone Pebble and Phalax. And then we have Carrion Grandeur, Waves of Darkness, Thunderbolt. We have Lightning Slash, excellent for jump attacks too. Prayerful Strike, amazing for poise damage and healing. Poisonous Mist and Poison Moth Flight. Poison Moth Flight, we have Bloody Slash, we have Chilling Mist. We have Assassin's Gambit to get around enemies, that's amazing. Barrage, Rain of Arrows is great. Golden Parry, probably the best parry window in the game. Barricade Shield, good defense and blood tax. And the C tier, we have Sacred Ring of Light, Golden Land, Ground Slam, Horror Loser, Earth Shaker, Takes a While, I'm not a huge fan of that, Barbaric Roar, Trolls Roar, Braggart's Roar is better, Piercing Fang, Raptors of the Mist, Storm Assault, Storm Stomp, Vacuum Slice, Carrying Retaliation, Through and Through, Enchanted Shot, No Skill, which is kind of convenient. Helps with shields at least. Phantom Slash is a little bit overrated in my opinion. Carrying Greatsword, Carrying Grandeur is better. Loretta Slash, Eruption, Prelate's Charge, Lightning Ram, Sacred Blade, Shared Order, Golden Slam, Golden Vow, Vow of the Indomitable, Holy Ground, Spectral Lance. 
White Shadows, Lore, Mighty Shot's not bad, it's alright. Parry, regular parry, I like Golden Parry better. Stormwall, Shield Bash, Shield Crash, and Thops Barrier, all are C tier for me. And some are going to disagree, but these are D tier for me. They're not viable for me for the most part. Gravitas, I just don't get a lot of damage out of. Kick's not really useful. Beast Roar, I like Stormblade better for what it does. Determination, Royal Nitch Resolve's way better. Flame of the Red Mains is terrible now. Horfrost Stomp, also nerfed. Lifesteal Fist, better for PvP. Sky Shot, not too useful. All right, that was a lot to get through with the tier list. Thanks for watching this one. I hope this is incredibly helpful ahead of DLC. And be sure to sub. If you're not subbed yet, don't forget, DLC is almost here. Shadow of the Earth Tree is right around the corner on June 21st. You're going to want to be subbed to this channel. Catch everyone later and have a great day.